Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church and welcome back to my outdoor kitchen. Today we're gonna to be making potentially the best bite in all of barbecue, brisket burn-ins. So it's been a couple years since we've done a burn-in video and we thought it was time to update it put some new learnings in and give you guys uh, a fresh look at one of my favorite bites in barbecue. Uh, if you don't know the history burn-ins, they were popularized by Arthur Bryant's in Kansas City. And you know, they used to just come right here off the fatty part of the brisket and they were given out to customers in line as a free bite. And then it was determined those are pretty dang good. So we need to figure out a way to make more and sell them. So the making of burn-ins has evolved over time. Now folks use the entire point to make burn-ins. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that today. Um, today we're starting out with a cooked brisket that I trimmed um, knowing that I was gonna make burn-ins. In the previous video that we did on burn-ins, I actually took a whole packer brisket and I showed you how to trim it. So I'll put a reference card up here in the, in the corner for you guys to watch that if you want. But let me talk to you about how I did that. And it was really simple. I took the whole packer, uh, there's two muscles in a brisket, a flat and a point. They sit on top of each other, slightly offset. And basically what I did when the brisket was raw, you can see a fat seam right through here. I made an incision at the top of the flat with a fillet knife and I basically lifted it up and just filleted it back. So just filleted this flat all the way back, all the way down to where the two muscles actually come together. And what I did was I removed all of that fat that was in between there and the reason you do that is to expose this point completely. So this is basically mostly meat and I can apply seasoning to it and smoke the brisket. That way when the brisket's done, which is where we are now, I can lift this flat up, I can remove the point away, and I can create my burn ends. Now a lot of you will ask, why didn't you just separate the two? Um, I like the way they cook connected, but you certainly could have removed these and cooked them separately. I personally am not a fan of just the brisket flat. If you remember back to 2014, it's what I lost on a barbecue pit master, so a flat is my nemesis. Uh, but the truth is, flats are not common at all in Texas. We just don't do it, so I cook them together. But again, you could cook it separately. I season this brisket simply with Meat Church Holy Cows, all I put on it. Ran it 250 degrees for 10, 11 hours until the brisket was done. So just like all my other brisket videos, it was probe tender right here in the middle of the flat, and I was good. Now I pulled it off the mill scale and I let it rest for probably about 45 minutes at this point because I want this point to cool down. Um, there's a lot of fat in the point, more fat than the flat, and I want it to cool down so I can slice it. So it's cooled just a bit, but as you can see with the steam that kind of rolling out, it's still, it's still pretty warm. So I'm gonna take my chef knife down in here and I'm gonna make an incision and just separate these two muscles. So now I can take this flat, put it in a half pan, and I'll just kind of set that aside. We're not gonna need that anymore. And so here what we've got left is the point. And this is all great meat, ready to be cubed up and turned into glorious brisket burn-ins. So from here, I'm gonna cube it up into one inch cubes. So I'm just gonna cut strips to begin. Now don't do this at 200 degrees because it's gonna be difficult to slice. If you ever try to do this too hot, you could also use an electric knife, but this is what I like to do right here. Again, just one inch strips and you can see it's cutting great. I mean, my Iron Grove knife is super duper sharp. I'm gonna line these up and just cut them into one inch cubes. See this brisket's got great smoke on it. This is absolutely one of my favorite bites for sure. I, I absolutely think Texas barbecue is king, but I'm gonna give Kansas City credit for this delicious morsel. Now 
And some of these bits have more bark than others. The point of the flat on the end that was completely exposed and nice and barked up and the pieces that were kind of underneath the piece of that um, flat, you know, don't have as much bark on them and that's, and that's fine. All right, let's, let's talk about the next steps. So now we need to season these uh, because, you know, right here you've got this meat that all these sides, none of that, and it was exposed to smoke, but we want to season all of that. A traditional Kansas City burn-in has a little bit of sweet to it, so I opt to use our Holy Gospel, which is our all-purpose rub that has a touch of sugar in it. You know, use your favorite rub, whatever you want. This is, uh, this is great on burn-ins, though. So just get it on all sides, and I'm just going to toss them around, and you don't have to be too perfect with it. You don't have to season too, too much either. All right, that is good enough for me. From here, I like to do the final stage in a half pan so it's nice and clean. So we're just gonna place all of these in here. Usually, you can get one point in a half pan. You don't wanna overcrowd it too much, so just make a judgment call. All right, now it's time to sauce. So if I'm making a Kansas City burn in, you know, I'm gonna use my buddy Mitch's Womp Sauce. A Kansas City sauce. Mitch Benjamin, dear friend of mine, makes this sauce. It is my absolute favorite barbecue sauce in the world. So I love it. If you're going to make a burn in, like I said, why not use a Kansas City sauce? But use whatever you want. And so what you want to do is you just want to coat the cubes in this sauce. And womp sauce is a little thick, so I'll often cut it with just a little bit of honey. But what you're trying to do is just coat these cubes. You do not want this pan sitting in an inch of sauce. So what the effect I'm looking for is like dunking this cube in barbecue sauce, letting it run off and cooking it that way. So you can see it's a little bit thick. So what I like, like I said, is to add a little honey. So I'm just going to put a little clover honey on it, which is also sweet, and just thins that out just a little bit. Burleson's honey is a local honey here from Waxahachie, Texas, friends of ours. So it's fun for us to use. Now just toss these around. Just coat all the sides. See how you're looking, and we're going to be ready to cook them. That's good for me. So you guys look close in that pan. There's not too much extra sauce in there. These don't need to be soaking in sauce. They just need to be, and you can see at the bottom here, there's not a lot of extra. You just want enough, again, to cover, cover the burn ends. And it's real simple from here. All we're going to do is put these back in the smoker, I'm going 250 degrees. You could go lower if you want. So what you're doing is you are caramelizing this barbecue sauce, but you're also continuing to render that fat. So how long do we go in this next stage? Next stage is really up to you. I usually like about 45 minutes. Some guys go way longer than that. So just look at it. Do you want it cooked less on the saucier side or do you want it cooked more? Totally up to you. But in the pit we go. So I'm running post oak. And I'm also smoking a meatloaf here for another video we've got. So I'm going to slide this in here. Stay tuned for that video. All right, my fire's a little low, so I'm going to go over here and work on that. And we'll see you guys back in just a little bit. The burn-ins have been smoking one hour. Now, I've tossed them twice during that time. So I've kind of just taken an insulated glove here with this glove on top and just toss them around two times to make sure I could caramelize all sides. And really, this is kind of what you're looking for. You want the sauce to caramelize. Uh, I just don't want it to look too wet, but that's completely your preference. And that fat right there, I mean, it's just going to be perfect. I'm ready to eat these, but they're going to be atomic. So I'm going to put them over here in this fancy dish so we can take a pretty picture of them while you wait. And then we're going to eat them and see how we did. All right, guys, these look awesome. I'm, uh, I'm crazy excited about it. You know, I, I, I think I said, like, one of the reasons I love these, you've got all that extra fat in the point that just continues to render as you cook these. You see how the sauce just locked on and caramelized, and these look fantastic. Let's give it a shot now that they've cooled off down the hatch. Almost missed. Doesn't suck. Man, that's good. Y'all know Texas barbecue's king. It's not even debatable, but I gotta give Kansas City the nod on this bite. So 
Man, super good. Recap of this cook. Again, got a video. Our previous brisket burning video shows you how we trimmed down to that point. But we just cooked a brisket like normal. I did cook this one meat side up. That's different um, than I do my normal fat side up when I'm doing a whole brisket. But when I want to maximize burn ins or make them for my friends, I rock meat up. So that's what we did here today. Um, cooked it till the brisket was done. <clears throat> Allowed it to cool for 20, 30 minutes so that we could slice that point. We removed the point. We cubed it in one inch cubes. We seasoned it with the Holy Gospel. We doused it with a little meat mitch womp sauce and a little Burleson's clover honey. Tossed it up, went back in the pit at 250 for an hour, and we have deliciousness. This is your party snack. Put this on the table when your guests arrive and they will uh, inhale them or make it the main course. If you guys like what we're doing, please like and subscribe to the channel. This is part, this is uh, the second series of our second season of our hardcore barbecue series. So click on that playlist. It's down in the description as well. There are loads of amazing barbecue videos and we'll see y'all next time.